If you are in Wall Street or elsewhere in the US and you advise or manage a European portfolio even of a fund, for sure you've heard of the so-called MIFID unbundling rules and you had problem with those. There are a set of good news for you and in this video we have packed the, the latest and most comprehensive regulatory intelligence on a move that is taking place in Europe to rebundle the cost of investment research and the cost of execution services. So backpedaling on the MIFID unbundling rules. As a bonus we will also look at what is changing with MIFID in uh, Europe. Let's dive in. If you follow this channel, you know that the story is always about the change that happens in the European regulation and affects in some way US market participants with exposure to Europe. This time we have an happy ending to a story of a major clash with US rules and customs and market practices as well as a consequence of a change in European rules on the so-called soft dollar arrangements and the bundling of the cost of investment research and execution services. I'm gonna second, I'm I sure that all these technical terms like uh, bundling, bundling, the reference to investment research, is it clear to you? Let's look at it into details. It is customary in the US and it was a practice in Europe as well that when a broker dealer was selling execution services, it would include also some investment research without um, having a, a separate charge or cost for the investment research. This is the, the so-called bundling. MIFID proposed to unbundle and so divorce not only optically the two fees, the one for the execution services and the one for the investment research, but also for what concerns the payment. Investment research had to be paid separately. And this is the, the unbundling. And now there is a proposal to rebundle the fee for investment research and the one for uh, execution services. Is it clear now? Good. Let's go back to the video. For uh, us to understand the clash that the MIFID unbundling rules had in, in the US, we need to look at how broker dealers operate in, in the market in the US from the legal and regulatory perspective. Broker dealers under the Investment Advisor Act in the US are allowed under an exemption not to register as investment advisors if the investment advice that they provide is merely incidental to their activity as broker dealers. This is the case when they provide investment research and don't get paid separately for, uh, for that. With the advent of the MIFID unbundling rules and the requirement for investment research to be paid separately, broker dealers were facing the issue of providing investment advice not in an incidental manner to their activity and accordingly they struggled to be able to fit with the, with the exemption. The SEC has been very understanding and has issued so-called no-action letters to grandfather broker-dealers that had to comply with MIFID. The effect of these no-action letters has ceased in July 2023. Very likely, the position of Europe is one of backpedaling on the unbundling and of a progressive rebundling of the fee for uh, investment research and execution services. Let's look at why in Europe there was this proposal to unbundle the investment research costs from the execution costs. Europe wasn't really coming from a bad place altogether. From the one end, we have regulatory concerns relative to uh, investor protection as well as avoidance of conflict of interest. There were also commercial drivers related to the, the market of investment research itself. From a regulatory perspective, first of all, and this is something that doesn't exist in, in the US yet, uh, investment firms in uh, Europe under MIFID have to offer and provide to their clients so-called best execution. Whenever they execute a transaction for their client, they have to make sure that it's in the best way possible. And one of the criteria is also the cost. The approach of Europe 
European authorities was to purport that when an execution service contains also an element of investment research, most likely there are not the conditions to have the, the best execution possible for um, the client through that specific avenue. The other concern from a regulatory perspective is relative to avoid uh, inducements. Investment firms, when they manage portfolio, they cannot retain fees, commission or any other type of, of benefits received by a third party and relative to the service they offer to their client. Investment research was exempted, provided that the cost of investment research was divorced not only optically and so specified separately, but also paid from a different account, be it from the client directly or from the investment firm. There are commercial reasons as well as we said for the, the unbundling. Europe really wanted to not only curb the amount of investment research that was produced, in most cases some of it wasn't best necessarily, but also wanted to see if there was the possibility to create a separate market for uh, investment research. That wasn't really what happened and after a few years in the MIFID and bundling rules, we had also some unintended consequence, namely small and medium enterprises went completely out of the radar and accordingly struggled to access capital. A first attempt to rebundle the investment research and execution costs comes with a package of legislative measures issued at the time of COVID in order to reboost the, the economy. As a consequence, here we get an initial rebundling whereby the investment research for issuers that do not exceed 1 billion in the 36 months period prior to the issuance of, of the research, for these issuers it is possible to rebundle the, the cost of the investment research with the cost of the execution services, provided that optically these costs are kept separate but they can be paid together. This first quick fix of MIFID, as it was called, gives us the methodology that will be adopted in a larger proposal to make broader amendments to MIFID with the, the Listing Act. The idea is to rebundle the cost of investment research and execution services for all the firms that don't exceed 10 billion in market capitalization this time over the same period of 36 months. We see clearly that as part of this listing act, as it's called, there are also new types of research that are being proposed, the so-called sponsor-issued research. The goal is to curb the, the negative impact unintended of the, the MIFID unbundling, which was for the small and medium enterprises to have gone out of the radar completely and struggled to, to access capital. Ultimately, we see how the need for small medium enterprises to access capital and the need to make European capital markets more vibrant prevailed in this case on the concerns of uh, consumer protection and avoidance of conflict of interest which nevertheless remain of uh, paramount importance amongst the, the main keywords in the infrastructure on the financial markets regulation in, uh, in Europe. If you made it up to this part of the video, I wanted to thank you and once again invite you to subscribe to the channel and hit like to this video. There is more to come on European regulation and the relation with, uh, with the US. Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned.